See that bad boy right there? That's ours, if we can move it. Try starting it, here it goes. Yeah, she's gonna fire right up. Okay, watch out, I'm gonna let it run. In a town called Midway, Utah. It's about an hour from the shop. And uh, we had someone reach out to us and say, hey, there's this crane that's sitting on a property. Nobody can move it. It's been sitting there forever. Um, if you guys can move it, you can have it. It's an old uh, military style crane with a blade on it. As you can see, um, it's got the big boom on it. It's got two engines from what I understand. Um, one runs, one doesn't. Anyways, long story short, there's been a lot of people that have been trying to get this off the property, but nobody's been able to do it. Turns out we're the four set of people to try to get this crane out of here and the last person hooked a Range Rover up to the battery and somehow got the boom to move, we're gonna be the smartest, we're gonna be the best, and we're gonna get this crane out of here. And if not, we're gonna take it out piece by piece with a telehandler. <laughs> right, Alan? What was that? Yep, right. Yeah, I mean, look at it. I'll get this thing running here in a minute. This thing should freak it. This should, this should start. A little bit of ether, this thing will just pop right up and go. So this crane has two engines. It's got an engine back on the actual crane unit and then it has a bigger engine, like a big V8 uh, diesel um, in the chassis. Uh, we're getting ready to fire up the little engine for the crane right now to see how it works. I'm gonna try it anyways. Um, I just checked the oil on the main uh, chassis engine and it is full of fuel, so that's not a good sign. Um, so we'll try to get this thing running because if we can get this running, we can at least get the boom situated and moved around. And then if the main engine doesn't run, we can at least still try to manhandle this thing. Um, onto the trailer. We need WD-40. I gotta work these levers because some of them are forced on the on position so we don't want this thing to start moving all over the place. Uh, if you don't lube them up they get stuck in a certain position. No matter what we do we just start spraying every single thing that you can see. I haven't messed with that. <laughs> you ever run a crane before like this? Uh, Have I? Yeah. No, I haven't. So if I ask you what those do, you'd be guessing? No, I mean, they're swing levers, they're clutch levers. Basically, they're all stuff to make the crane work. Well, and there's some instructions just... right here. Lever arrangement, push to swing right, right there. Well, what's a big dog right there? Oh, that's the clutch. Oh, the big dog. Right dog. hand drum brake, push to set, boom hoist, push it down, up. Okay. All right, it's almost summertime, which means the weather is heating up, which means our bodies are gonna start to sweat. You guys have seen me in some of these videos where once I start sweating, it's game over. I can lose like a couple of gallons of fluid in a single afternoon, and I need to be able to replace that. Drinking water, just plain water and over and over and over again, is kind of hard for me because I just get tired of the taste. That's why when the sponsor of today's video, which is Air Up, uh, reached out and said that they basically had reinvented water, I was like, no way. Air Up makes these water bottles with this custom spout on it, right? So you take the flavor pod, you put it right here on the spout of the bottle. So when you drink, it mixes your water with the scent of this flavor pod. You see, I'm tasting it with my nose and not just with my taste buds. So I'm getting all the benefits of drinking pure water while having the fun of drinking something that's delicious. I'll be honest, I was a little skeptical because I was like, well, how did you make flavored water without adding any flavor? That's wild. I just, I got so excited I spilled. Don't cut that, Nate, that was real. You gotta try it, that's all I can say. If you are having a hard time getting enough water uh, on a daily basis, which pretty much everybody's kind of like chronically dehydrated, very few people drink enough water every day, this right here is the solution, hands down, 100%, and Air Up is gonna hook you guys up. If you click the link in my description below, use the promo code HEAVY20, they're gonna give you guys 20% off the whole setup here. I did not know that something like this existed, and I am absolutely, all about it, and I think you will too. All it takes is one sip, and I think you'll be hooked like I am. Thank you, Air Up, for sponsoring the video. Thank you for keeping me hydrated, and thank you for hooking you guys up. So click the link in my description below, get hooked up with some flavor now. These cranes were used in the military for a little bit of everything, obviously lifting stuff. Um, I believe it's a 40,000 pound capacity, 20 ton crane. Um, has a big blade on the front. Cranes 
don't like to function on uneven terrain. So that blade right there will push itself a nice flat pad. And then it puts the outriggers down and then lifts whatever the military needs. This is actually one of my favorite parts of what we do is getting to know new equipment that we've never messed with before. And this is definitely one of those. And when it comes to cranes, you gotta be really careful because there's a lot that can go wrong really quickly, especially with all these old cables. Um, these cables are supporting a lot of weight, a lot of just, there's a lot going on here, um, which is why we're gonna take our time, you know, an old excavator or something like that, just jump in and fire it up and get the hydraulics working. This, there's a lot of me uh, like mechanical linkages, this giant chain right here that I'm getting ready to spray down. Um, just lots of moving parts that if one goes sideways, it either makes it so that the machine doesn't function properly or even worse, you know, somebody gets hurt. So we're gonna take a little bit extra time here and just grease everything up before we even get it started because if we get started and there's a clutch that's engaged or a lever that's, you know, stuck, it could want to immediately start doing something that we don't want it to do. So we're gonna free up all the controls first before we do anything. So the goal here is to get the swivel, uh, the actual crane body working, um, and then we'll work on that. But I'm not real optimistic. Well. I'm not gonna say I'm not optimistic. I just, there's a lot of fuel in the oil on the main engine, so that could be an issue. Uh, so yeah, this is, uh, it's interesting. Like all the old placards and stuff are pretty much worn off. So kind of guessing what some of the levers and stuff do. And obviously there's no manual that I found yet. So that's another uh, another challenge, but I love it. Those tires are pretty awesome. Yeah, they are. Are we ready? Yeah. Clear. We're gonna try starting it. Here it goes. Yeah, she's gonna fire right up. Okay, watch out, I'm gonna let it run. Okay. Get some throttle. I will. All right, so we got the boom where we want it. Um, crane is running well. There's some adjustments that need to be made. Uh, all the crane control levers are like hydraulic or mechanical. So by hydraulic, I mean like the way your brakes in your car work. Uh, one of the master cylinders is not working, but we don't really need it to right now because the uh, winch and the, and the boom are kind of where we need them. So we're gonna decide whether or not this has to be dismantled, take the boom off to be able to transport it. But uh, next thing we're gonna try to figure out is see if the main engine will run because we have to get those outriggers up and those are run off of the main engine. So I think we're good on the crane for a minute. All right, so now the goal is to get the main motor started so that the truck will move. So uh, now we're hooking up power to the batteries and getting the main motor fired up so we can drive this truck out of here. Wait, what is it, what is it? It's a rock chick, look at him. He's right in this hole, Dave. Come look at him. You guys are mean. You're evicting him out of his house. Hey, how much you paying in rent there, big guy? You want to come live in the shop? You want to come live in the shop? Stick your finger in there, Dave. Ah, I feel does. Ah! He will. He <laughs> will. Well, it doesn't look like we've got the uh, engine running. So what we're gonna do is uh, crack the lines and get these outriggers up by brute force using the telehandler. Feels like it came in. Feels like. Quarter turn in time, I win. 
we got the outriggers all lifted up. Uh, we've not got the main engine started yet, but we're gonna see if the uh, frame, if the body of it will roll at all. Uh, it has air brakes, so if the air brakes are engaged, then it's not gonna wanna roll. However, we have an air compressor, so we could potentially, if we can't get the main engine started, which we're not giving up yet, um, but worst case scenario, we could charge up the air system and see if we can just get it to roll. So right now, I'm just gonna push on it with the telehandler to see how locked up those brakes are, see which wheels might move, might not. So we're just gonna kinda wiggle it and bump it around for a second. the treasure box you found in New York? Yeah. Oh, he's got a, he's got a chunk of wood. You gotta get in there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the end of a block. <laughs> tell him it's a treasure box, don't tell him it's wood. Does anybody have a key? <laughs> so here's the plan, guys. Uh, there's a chance we could get the main engine running in the crane, uh, or in actually the chassis. It's a big V8 Cummins. Uh, the only problem is it's got a lot of fuel in the oil, which means there's a problem with the fuel system. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that it wouldn't start, but it wouldn't be safe to start unless we drained all the oil, and we don't want to try to do an oil change in this alfalfa field. So rather than worry about you know spilling oil or chemicals here on the ground, we're just going to pull it onto the trailer. Uh, then when we get it back to the shop, we'll see if we can get it to fire up where we have you know the ability to change oil and that kind of stuff real easily. But telehandler has really impressed me right now. <laughs> the fact that it's pulling this thing up this hill. Well, telehandlers aren't necessarily meant for like pulling and you guys already know they don't have great traction so the fact that it's made it this far is great uh, but the plan now is we're basically going to use kind of a daisy chain the Terra Star to the telehandler that should get us up on the road and then we can load that thing on the low boy fairly easily <laughs> All right, situation now is way too long to transport this how it is. So, breaking it apart, luckily, super easy, it's four bolts, at least it depends on the cables. Hopefully we can just fold this back to itself and then sort on top of the machine and or underneath. But, uh, so Diesel Dave's up there right now, taking out all the bolts, cables are now undone, Spark's gonna lift it with the tiller handler and hopefully we can just kinda, that's exactly how it'll go. Did you get that? <laughs> I got that. <laughs> that was awesome. Well, got it done. But we got that old crane off the property and back down to the shop without too many hiccups. So, 
Hopefully you were buckled up the whole time because it was a wild ride and get ready for the next one. I was mean like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are you pushing at? <laughs> and get ready for the next one.